In this video, we're going to cover Game Boy and Game Boy Color emulation on the PC version of RetroArch. I love to emulate the Game Boy and Game Boy Color in the here and now. While I still love using my original systems with modded screens and all that, there's something about just having them blown up on the big screen with a nice shader effect that is just really appealing. And the ability to emulate Link Cable is also very handy for two-player gaming. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get it all set up on the PC version of RetroArch. So let's dive in. So to get started with Game Boy and Game Boy Color emulation on the PC version of RetroArch, you need to install the PC version of RetroArch if you have not done so already. So links in the description below to my RetroArch setup guides for anyone that is needing to get this set up. So follow along with my setup guides, get it installed, get your settings configured, then continue along with this guide. Once you have RetroArch installed, you are just going to need to source some Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, and there are multiple ways of doing this. You can dump them using an N64 EverDrive and Transfer Pack. You could also use something like the Retro Blaster Programmer, or if you have a modded 3DS, you could dump them from the virtual console releases that were on that system. Or, of course, you could resort to Google and search them up that way, but as always, no illegal download links are going to be provided on my channel, so don't bother asking. But once you have your game sourced, just put them anywhere you want to store them on your computer's hard drive. It doesn't matter where they go. So for my demonstration purposes today, I'm just going to add them to my RetroArch demo folder under my games folder. And there we go. And once you have your games placed, we are set to begin downloading the same boy core within RetroArch. So just get booted up into RetroArch. On the main menu, head to Online Updater, Core Downloader. Press right on your keyboard to scroll down to Nintendo. And we are looking for Nintendo Game Boy Game Boy Color Same Boy. So just press Enter to download this core. And once that core is downloaded, you can back out to the main menu and begin loading up Game Boy and Game Boy Color content. So one method of doing so is to head up to Load Content. Navigate to the directory where your games are stored. Select a game, choose your core, and tell it to run. And there we go, Game Boy Color games running on the PC version of RetroArch. Now personally, I'm not too fond of that method, so what I like to do instead is make a games playlist to make it easier to access my games. So my favorite method of doing so on the PC version of RetroArch is to use the desktop menu. So you can click on Show Desktop Menu here or press F5 on your keyboard to launch it. Once the desktop menu has loaded up, just right click anywhere here on the content browser to make a new playlist. And I'm going to start with Game Boy first, so I'm just going to type in Nintendo space dash space Game Boy. And then there we go. New Game Boy entry here on the left. So just select that. Right click in the white space here, add folder. Navigate to the directory where your games are stored. So I have mine here. So I want to start with Game Boy, select folder, core, choose same boy, database, Nintendo, Game Boy, and then press OK. Now all of your games are going to be showing up in the playlist here. Now if desired, you could right click on your Game Boy playlist entry and tell it to download all the thumbnails for this playlist. That way it will look a little cleaner when you load it up in RetroArch. Now games do need to be named a specific way for the um, database to find the thumbnails for them, and chances are... If you have some extra stuff that was added in, uh, if you ran them through like Good Set or something like that, they won't be detected properly. So for example, it didn't find Link's Awakening for me. So if I get rid of this revision label, it might be able to find it. Yep, there we go. And then for Pokemon Yellow, if I get rid of the Super Game Boy enhancement here, it might detect it now as well. But it doesn't look like it liked that one either, so... That's fine. So what I like to do in these instances is head over to GameFAQ, search up the game in question, and then there is a media section that you can click on boxes, and it will have nice box scans of all of that game's versions typically. So I'm looking for Pokemon Yellow for Game Boy. There we go. I'm just going to save this to my desktop. Move RetroArch out of our way real quick here. So there's my Pokemon Yellow box art. It's in JPEG format, which unfortunately doesn't work with the desktop menu anymore. So we just have to open up Paint drag the box art in, and then save it as a PNG picture. And then we don't need to name it anything specific at this point, so back in the desktop menu, select your game in question, and then drag your PNG box art into the box art field here to apply it to the game. So there we go. Now all of my Game Boy games have their box arts. And now I'm going to make my Game Boy Color playlist, so just right click in here again, new playlist, Nintendo, space dash space, Game Boy Color. 
And there we go. Second entry for Game Boy Color specific games. So same deal. Right click in here. Add folder. Navigate to where your games are stored. And Game Boy Color games. There we go. Select folder. Core. Same boy. Database. Nintendo Game Boy Color. And there we go. There's now all of my Game Boy Color games. So same thing. If you want to pretty this one up, you can right click. Download all thumbnails. This playlist. So same deal, you could go through and see if it found all the box arts, and if it didn't, you can manually go in and add them yourself. But for my demo purposes, I'm just going to leave it at that. Yeah, um, I already showed you how you can manually add them in, if desired. But once you have your playlist made, just close out of the RetroArch desktop menu. Press F on your keyboard to make RetroArch full screen once again. And now to get your new playlist entries to show up on the left, just click on Restart RetroArch in the main menu. And now our Game Boy and Game Boy Color playlist entries are showing up here on the left. And then all of our games here are showing up as well. And then to play one, all we need to do is select it and tell it to run. And there we go. Game Boy and Game Boy Color games up and running on the PC version of RetroArch using our playlists. Now this being emulation, there are a number of additional settings we could set to enhance our emulation experience. So from this point on in the video, we're going to be talking about some extra fun stuff here. So... Pressing F1 on your keyboard or a guide button on a controller brings up the RetroArch Quick Menu. Now from here, scroll down to Core Options. And our first set of options are in the System tab here. So going in, we can change the emulated model of our Game Boy. So Automatic should work for most use cases, but if not, you can manually select something here. So for example, if you have some Game Boy Color games that have Game Boy Advance specific features like Shantae, you can manually set it to be a Game Boy Advance. You can also set it to be emulating Super Game Boy. So if you turn on Auto Detect to include Super Game Boy, that should work as well. So just as a quick demo here, let's restart Pokemon Blue. And there we go. So now that it has auto detected Game Boy or Super Game Boy features, it has loaded up the Super Game Boy version of the game. Our next option is to auto-detect the Super Game Boy model, so if you want to choose between the different versions of the Super Game Boy, you could do so here. And last, we have real-time clock emulation, so this is set to your PC's clock by default, but you can change it if desired. Alright, backing out, next up, Video Tab. So first up, Game Boy Mono Palette. So this will let you choose the color of your regular Game Boy games if not using the Super Game Boy emulation, so... It's set to grayscale by default, so that gives you the black and white image that you see behind us. But you can come in here and change it to different versions of the Game Boy. So, lime, olive, or teal. So, if you want to have a more authentic Game Boy experience for the actual um, old school screens that they had in them, you could choose one of these options here, or you could just leave it on grayscale. Our next option is Game Boy Color Color Correction. So this is set to Modern by Balance, so it looks like this in-game. But you could change it to a number of different options. So we have Modern Accurate, Boost Contrast, Reduce Contrast, so this one will be a little more washed out, Correct Color Curves, Harsh Reality, <laughs> I love the name of that one. And then you can turn color correction off. So personal preference on this one, if you want, on whichever one you want to use. So I'm just going to use modern accurate for my personal taste. Next, we have ambient light temperature. So there's a number of different options to choose from. So you could just basically change how things will look. It can result in some funky results, though. So do be aware of that. So, personal preference on that one as well. Next up, display borders. So this is set to only for Super Game Boy by default. So if you don't want to have the Super Game Boy borders show up in your games, but you still want to have the colors that it provides for original Game Boy games, you could turn this option off so that way that border never displays. All right, next up, audio. So first up is high pass filter. So this is set to accurate. But if you want to mess around with it or turn it off, you could do so here. And then you can change the interference volume here. So this is um, the buzz that you would get in a Game Boy speaker. So if you want to emulate some of that buzz, you can do so. I don't care for it personally, but hey, personal preference. All right, next up, input. So rumble mode. So you can enable rumble mode for games that supported it. So episode one racer or um, what was it? A Kirby game that had rumble support. So those will get emulated. 
And that's going to do it for our core options within the same boy core as far as single player games are concerned. So as always, if there's options you want to have set for some games but not others, you can go up to manage core options and save them as a game option file. So that way, those settings only apply to that specific game. But now let's talk about link cable emulation using the same boy core. So there is a very easy way to enable link cable emulation. So first up, head to load core on the main menu. Scroll down to your same boy core and press enter to load it. Now a new subsystems menu will appear on the main menu, so select this, and it'll say load two player Game Boy Link, current content Game Boy number one. So press enter on this, navigate to your Game Boy games folder. So we're just gonna do a We're just gonna do a link for Pokemon Gold here for the first one. And now under the Sib Systems folder once again, load two player Game Boy Link, current content Game Boy number two. So select another game here. So for this one, we will load up Pokemon Yellow. Now go into Sub Systems once again and tell it to start the two player Game Boy Link and you'll see both of your selected games right there below it. And now you will have two instances of Same Boy running at once with your two different versions of the game. So, save files for multiplayer, if you're using two different games, it uses the standard save files that you already have. If you're trying to use multiplayer on the same game, it's going to create two different save files for that game, one for each player. So do be aware of that. To get controls working, you either need to plug in two controllers, or go back into your RetroArt Quick Menu, and then just press B or Backspace to go back out to your main menu here, go to Settings, input and then under port 1 controls you can select the device index so if you don't want to be using the so if you only have one controller you can choose if that's on port 1 or port 2 and then for port 2 you can change the device index so I only have one controller plugged in right now so under port 1 I'm gonna turn off my dual sense and then under port 2, I'm going to turn this over to the DualSense, so that way I can control both instances of my game using my keyboard and my controller. It's a lot easier if you have two controllers hooked up. Just saying. So I realized my Pokemon Yellow and Pokemon uh, Gold or whatever I chose demo was going to be a little bit more difficult to pull off, so I reloaded everything with Pokemon Red and Pokemon Yellow since I put save files in my save folder. So... Here is a demo of multiplayer battles working with link cable emulation, so there we go. As you can see, working just as you would expect. But with the link cable activated, there are a number of extra core options available to us. So first up, you could turn on or turn off link cable support. You could change the screen layout between a top-down and a left-right view, so that way your screens can be bigger. Choose which Game Boy is outputting audio. And then you could change all of the same options that we've covered previously between Game Boy number two as well. So videos, audio, and input. And there you go, link cable emulation. So one last thing I wanna cover real quick before we call this video good is the use of shaders. RetroArch has such a good extensive shader library so you can enable or disable them in the shader tab. Make sure you've downloaded them from the online updater. Then you can head into the load tab here and just begin loading up different uh, effects for your emulation here. So I like to load up an LCD grid. So I like to use the Game Boy Color with a motion blur grid, so that way it just kind of gives it a bit more of an authentic feel to the emulation. And it looks a little something like that, so it kind of washes out the colors a little bit for um, color correction. So if you have enabled color correction in your um, video settings in your core options, you can turn it off so that way you don't have to worry about double color correction just to give it a better uh, better feel with the shader. But shaders are personal preference so it doesn't really matter which one you use. Just use one you like and run with it. So once you find a shader you like, you can go back into the shader tab, click on the save button, and save it as a core preset so that way every time you load up a game, that is the shader that will greet you. And that's going to do it for setting up Game Boy and Game Boy Color on the PC version of RetroArch. Fairly straightforward, and the added ability to use link cable emulation is top-notch. I freaking love it.
But thank you so much as always for watching today's video. I hope it helps you get your emulation projects up and running to your liking. But here at the end, I do have a couple of favors to ask. If you have not done so already, please be sure to hit that like or dislike button depending on how much you like today's tutorial, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. I always have loads of content coming your way and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little really goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing this content to all of you. Big shout out to all of our current backers, thank you so much for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going. You are the truest of champs, thank you so very much. But until next time my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.